he's got to give up. Here we go, sing my heart. My heart was captured, sin held me captive. Now cause of you, God, I'm set free. I feel like dancing, I can't help moving. I got this crazy joy creeping up in me. We are in week four of the Miracle Series, which is super exciting. But I have my friend here, Lily, that's going to tell us what's up for the service. I am. Hi, Stella. <laughs> Hi, Rice Kids. We have got a very exciting episode for you today. Nice. Johnny Lewis is preaching. So good. Who doesn't love it when Johnny Lewis preaches? <laughs> Second thing, we're going to play a game together. Drop, stop, and pop. Pop. Very pop, pop, just like that, which is very cool. Third, we're going to do the memory verse. Nice. Who doesn't love the memory verse? Mm -hmm. And then fourth, we're going to worship together. So, I mean, sounds pretty awesome. Well, that sounds really good, but we should check out the game. Yes. All right, here we go. Well, welcome back to another game of Stop, Drop and Pop. Great, because I completely forgot how to say the game. So that <laughs> was really good. Your mind just blanked, it? It did blank. <laughs> but if your mind is blanked about how this game works, do not fear, because we are the greatest of the great, we're going to tell you what it's all about. Let's go to Mackie Turbo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Stop, Drop and Pop game. My name is Mac, one half of your commentary duo, joined by my best friend for the bestest, longest time. His name is... Turbo. Turbo. Oh, that, we did it together that time. Thank you. I, I was thinking about just spicing it up. Well, it was very spicy. Here's how the game works. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, there are multiple balloons, about 100 balloons that each competitor needs to pop, including the stompy balloons, the grabby balloons, and, of course, my favorite part of the track, the big balloons. Wow. That's a lot of balloons, man. That is a lot of balloons. I've just been doing some calculations. Oh. And across the three weeks that we have just previously seen, yep, I believe, if yep. my math is being correct, we are well in the hundreds of balloons being popped. That's some, that's some fast maths, Turbo. All right, back to you, Johnny and Annalise, uh, for the start of the race. Well, there it is. That's how you play the game. Now, game. Annalise, you have chosen, because you are the lady, Lady Streets first, that you're going to go white. Team I'm white gonna, balloon. Team white balloon. I'm going to go blue. Make sure you choose the home who you're going to choose, which will probably be me. Me. Should we do this? Let's do it. All right. Let's go. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Here they go. Races of oh, Johnny with the pop of the lump of the lump. 
My oh my, Annalise and, here. Wait, oh, she's run, she she's run straight past. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she's had to go backwards. <laughs> Annalise. Oh my goodness. That's that a real backtrack for, wow. Did you see those stomps? Johnny here ripping those drapes uh, too. Of course, here's my favorite part of the trail. Oh, second favorite part, the zigzag straight. Yes. And there's a real zigzag. And it seems like there have been some white balloons falling off the chairs. I don't know who stuck those to the chairs, but they have not done a good job uh, as they have in the previous races. Oh, that there were some tight glutes that made the pop go. Yep. They are, of course, uh, glutes talking about gluteus maximus eyes, uh, yes. which is uh, the buttocks region. The buttocks region. That's correct there, Mag. Now it's the uh, Annalise is really struggling to pop the... Oh, there it goes. It seems like real shock that's went through the whole auditorium when she popped that balloon. It's like shock waves coming off the old sound waves. I think they're the same thing. Uh, Johnny now coming through uh, the uh, tunnel here, the, the first of two tunnels. Really struggling to get through that and really caused a bit of a delay, and now Annalise is the head of the game. These guys look like they're extremely competitive. Correct me if I'm wrong, but have both of these competitors lost? No, at least one. Ah, okay. So Johnny here going for his first win. Yes. And look Desperate at how fast. for a victory, I believe. He is going so fast. And Lace here jumping into the tunnel as well. And as tradition, let's sing a song. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yep. Oh, that is Johnny right now. Oh, I mean, nice. It was quite nice harmony, by the that way. Was, I didn't even try. I'm so sorry. I wasn't sure oh. what key you were singing in. It was G. Oh, should have said that from the start, Turbo. Sorry about that. Okay, Johnny here coming down the stairs now. Of course, have inclined, now declining. And popping balloons, ripping them to shreds. Look how far ahead he is. Rock. Paper, scissors? I don't know what he's trying to do with that, but he's popping balloons left, right, and center. If he's doing rock, paper, scissors, it's a different game. Uh, we oh. are doing the stop, drop, and pop. Oh, there's collision! And he's, he's taking the balloon with his I'm illegal? not sure if that's... I don't think that's kosher. Wow. Wow, Johnny throwing it very hard. He Annalise, is desperate for a victory right now. She's going for the more slow and steady wins the race. Oh, Johnny going for the spinny aroundy, the darty. I don't know what he's trying to prove here, but it ain't proving much. No, I don't know how good of a technique that one was. Johnny now back into his rectangle for the blue balloon team. Can he get it? Oh, oh wow! How did that not pop? Well, I believe it didn't hit the dot. Ah, that'll be why. That'll be why. That would be, oh, and Annalise losing control of the balloon. These are very tough to throw. Oh! oh! And just as I say that, the commentator gets it on the money with Johnny lying on his tummy, but his back. Yeah, his back tummy, I believe it back is. Back tummy. Very, very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I've been Mac. He has been Turbo. Over to Annalise and Johnny for the pre-match discussion debate. Well, well done, Johnny and Team Blue. He yeah. is our winner for today, even though he had shoelaces undone. What are the chances? That's amazing. Chances are very low. Anything you want to say, Johnny? I really need a drink of water. How do you feel? But he's okay, guys, don't you worry. I'm okay. I'll I feel a little bit less tired, but that's probably because I didn't win. Maybe I should have put in more effort. <laughs> maybe. maybe. I mean, maybe you would have won. We'll see yeah, you next so. time. Let's see who's on top of the leaderboard Pro next me. week. Pro me. You know what time it is, it's time for our Mimi verse. So stand up to your feet, you're gonna follow along with me. Are you ready? Okay, here we go, let's say this out. Jesus looked at them and said, with me, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. That's Matthew 19, verse 26. Nice everyone. You guys are doing amazing, doing good, but I reckon we should do this one more time. Yeah? Okay, when the beat drops, get ready. Okay, nice everyone. Let's say this out. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. That's in Matthew 19, verse 26. You guys are good and amazing, but you know what time it is. Let's freestyle.
waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing Welcome back to another episode in our miracle series where we are learning all about the amazing miracles that God has done in the Bible, but also in our own lives as well. And it's been such a cool series already as we've looked at so many different miracles that God has done. And today we were looking at another miracle, but today our one thing is as this. There is a miracle of peace. A miracle of peace. Do you know, I don't know about you guys, but have you ever been in a big storm where the wind's really, really loud? 
where the rain comes down so hard that it makes the roof make this weird noise like like that. And the wind feels so crazy you can find, feel your house shaking a little bit. Well, I live up on top of a hill and the hill is not exactly a great place to be in a storm because the hill is the highest point in the hill, in the land, and you get hit by the wind really, really hard. In fact, my bedroom window looks right over the Wellington Harbour and we get this amazing gust of wind that comes through the suddenly and it hits right on my window and when there's a big storm, it makes the loudest noise ever. I get so scared of these big storms because I'm not sure if my window's going to break, if it's going to shatter, or if my trampoline down below is going to fly away. So I make sure I go and chain up the trampoline so trees doesn't fly away. I make sure I close all the windows and I sit in bed and I try to go to sleep, but it's so hard because it's so noisy and I just can't find peace in that moment. You know, there's a story in the Bible, a bit similar to this. In fact, the disciples, they were caught in the middle of a storm. In fact, in the storm that they were in, they were also in a boat in the water, in the middle of a lake, where this big storm turns up. And the Bible says that the waves were so big that they were coming over the boat, and they were so scared that they were going to drown. But Jesus, the Bible says, was also in the boat. However, he wasn't awake. The Bible says that Jesus was sleeping in the boat. How good is that if you could just sleep for a storm? And the Bible says that the disciples were freaking out. They were so scared because they didn't know what was going to happen to them. They woke up Jesus saying, Jesus, save us. We're going to drown. But Jesus gets up and he says, where is your faith? Where is your faith, disciples? And the Bible says that he goes and he talks to the wind and he talks to the waves. And all of a sudden, the wind goes down, the waves go down, and the storm is all gone. And peace comes back in that moment. How incredible is that? That our God can control the wind and the waves and the storm and tell it to go away whenever we need it to go away. God brings a miracle of peace into our lives. You know, through our lives, we can uh, do things and, and live in different ways that can almost bring on different bad things in our life. Now imagine that this balloon here I got here, it's a bluey purple balloon. It's a, I don't know what kind of color it is. It's a bluey purple balloon is what it is. Now imagine that this balloon is our life. And if things happen in our life and they're not very good, like maybe we're scared of big storms. <sighs> kind of gets a bit bigger, right? But maybe other things happen in our life. Maybe we watch a bad movie that we weren't meant to watch and it kind of piles up on us and we feel a bit guilty about things that are going on and things that we've watched and it gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> Woo, that's a lot of you right there. And then we get more things coming to our lives that we shouldn't be doing. Maybe we said some bad things to our friends. Maybe we participate in some gossip that's not very good. And it gets bigger and bigger to the point where it's not meant to be like this anymore. The balloon is getting too big for it. It cannot contain all the bad things that are going on in our lives. But it keeps on going. The fear keeps on getting bigger. The things that happen in our life keep coming up more, 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 more. And the pressure gets too big for our heart that like this balloon, if I keep on going, it will just suddenly pop like that. But that's not how God created us to be. We weren't meant to live with all the fear and the bad things in our lives, but God came to give us peace in our lives. We weren't meant to keep on blowing up to the point to where we pop. And that wasn't the point of the balloon. The balloon was meant to be blown up with good things so that it could serve a purpose of being a fun balloon. But if we keep on putting the bad things into the balloon, eventually it will pop. But that's not how God wanted it to be for you and for me. Instead, God wanted us to live a life that was peaceful and fun. Just like this balloon's going to happen right now. Ready? I was spending a lot more dramatic zzz around the room with that balloon, but that didn't work very well. But you get what I'm trying to say. The balloon was never made to pop, and neither were you. God came to give us peace, and so that we can have peace in our lives and live 
a good and healthy life without Jesus. Jesus in this story was, brought the miracle of coming the winds and the waves to show us that he can bring peace even in the most craziest of times in our lives. When we're worried, when we're scared, when we don't know what's happening, God can bring all our fears into one place and replace it with peace. We can trust God to do that, to calm our hearts and bring peace to, anywhere, to any place that we're in. In fact, there's a special peace that God gives to us. It's called Shalom Peace. This is a peace that goes beyond our understanding, what we could ever dream or imagine. God can give that to you and to me if we were just to ask Him to do that for us. We can give Him all of our fears, all the bad things that goes on in our life, and He, in return, gives us the peace that we need. You know, I said before that I didn't really like, I don't really like being in storms. But I remember as a little kid in bed, during a storm, and I couldn't go to sleep because of the fear that was going on in my life from the noise and the craziness going outside. And I remember sitting there in my bed, not knowing what to do. But the only thing I knew what to do was the one thing that I learned in Sunday school, and that was to pray to God. Pray to God that He would give me peace, that I could go to sleep. Pray to God that He would help me with my fears so that they would go away and that I could just trust in Him. So I remember being in my bed, and praying to God. Just a simple and easy prayer to say, God, can you help me? I don't want to be scared anymore. I don't want to stay up late at night while the storm's going, wondering if I'm going to be okay or not, but I want your peace. And then I went to sleep. Do you know what's amazing about that? God answered my prayer. I wasn't scared of the storm anymore. In fact, I had a great night's sleep because God gave me Shalom, peace. And he can give that to you too right now. In fact, if you're here right now and you're hearing this message and you've got some fears in your life, maybe you've got some things that have been building up on your heart for a long time and you need peace about those things. Well, God can give you peace right now. All you need to do is ask him for it. That's the amazing thing about our God. There's not a big list of things that you need to do. There's no testing to take to make sure that you qualify for God's peace. But you can ask for God's peace and he'll give it to you right now. So if that's you, I want you to lift up your hands to heaven, close your eyes, I'm going to pray for you, and we're going to believe that God's peace is going to come over your life right now. You ready? All right, here we go. Well, Heavenly Father, I thank you for every single child who's lifting up their hands right now to say, Lord God, I need your peace. I need your peace in my life to take away the fear, to take away all the things that have been burdening me and weighing me down for so long. And today, we declare, Lord God, that your peace will come and flood their lives, Lord God. Lord God, that fear will be gone, Lord God. That, Lord God, they will live a life, Lord God, that is free, Lord God, of anything that is holding them back. And let them, Lord God, be filled with your joy instead. In your mind, let me pray. And everyone said, Amen. You know, there's one more thing that God freed us from. And that was from this thing called sin. Sin is all the bad things that we do in our lives. In fact, we've done so many bad things in our lives that we couldn't actually pay back God for all the bad things that were done. So God instead came down to earth 2,000 years ago in the form of Jesus. And he came down and he died on the cross for you and for me so that we could have another chance at life again. He paid for our sins so that we could enter a relationship with God. And if you haven't got a relationship with God today, then just like we prayed for peace in our lives, you can pray that God will come into your life today and you can have a relationship with him. He wants to make sure that he has a relationship with you. He is what we call our heavenly father. And he loves you so much that today he wants to make sure that he can have a relationship with you. So maybe today you've heard and raised kids a lot about this thing called relationship with God, about is it in Jesus coming to your heart as your Lord and Savior, but you haven't done it yet. Well, right now, you can do it today. So if that's you and you want to have a relationship with God, you want to say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior, be my best friend, come and live in my life then you can do that with one simple prayer. And I'd love to help you on that prayer today. If that's you, close your eyes, bow your heads, and say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving me and for giving me life. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. Please forgive me and take away the sin that blocks me from you. I believe in you. Be my Lord, be my best friend, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're so proud of you. And now my best friends in the world, they've got some really easy three steps for you to take. Now they made a great decision, follow Jesus. Check it out. Well, congrats to everyone that said yes to Jesus. We are so happy that you've made that decision today. But right now we have three next steps that we would love for you to take. So what's number one, Lily? Number one is to tell someone about it. You can tell your life group leader, you can tell your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your best friend, tell someone that you trust. Nice, that sounds so good. Yeah. And number two is read your Bible. And I encourage you to read your paper Bible, or if you wanna download the YouVersion app, you can have your um, parents' permission to do that, I would encourage you to read your Bible. Yes, read your Bible. And the third thing is to pray. It's not complicated. It's not crazy. You just have a conversation. Nice. Say, hi, God. Tell them how you're feeling. Tell them how your day. Tell them what you need some help with. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, that's all the steps that we have today. So until next time, ka kite. Bye.